Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim stated that the Malaysian government's decision to implement targeted diesel subsidies is crucial for the country's well-being despite the measure unpopularity. Malaysia has begun moving away from expensive blanket subsidies, favouring a more targeted approach to primarily assist those in need. The country which heavily subsidises fuel, cooking oil and rice among other essentials has seen its subsidy bill reach record levels in recent years due to rising commodity prices straining government finances. The diesel subsidy bill alone has increased tenfold from 1.4 billion ringgit in 2019 to 14.3 billion ringgit in 2023. This shift from blanket subsidies to targeted subsidies represents a significant change in economic policy. And to discuss further and help us understand better on this, joining us right now is Dr. Sowaini, Senior Lecturer at the School of Businesses and Economics, SPE UPM. I want to say thank you very much, Doctor. Firstly, despite its unpopular nature, is a reducing a diesel subsidy is it a good strategy economically economically uh, nickly in the short and long term as price hike is expected and is bound to happen okay thanks lena okay good morning to everyone okay so the recent reductions in the diesel subsidies in malaysia okay has led to significant changes in the pricing okay, and distributions of the diesel fuel okay effective from 10 of june Day 2024, the government increased the price to Europe 5, B10, and B20 diesel okay, in uh, Semenanjung Malaysia by uh, 1 ringgit 20 cents per liter, uh, which is around 56% height okay, compared uh, to the old price, and adjust it to the new price, which is 3 ringgit 35 cents per liter. Okay, so the adjustment is part of the government's efforts to rationalize the flu uh, subsidies and reduce the financial burdens on the national's budget. Okay, so this, this is a, a, a briefing before we start our topic today. So the targeted diesel subsidies program is aims to ensure that the subsidies are provided to only to those who need them the most. So eligible in, yeah, individuals receive the cash assistance of 200 Monday, while the larger skilled land uh, transport and logistic operations the operators can apply for subsidies through the SKDS, is the subsidy diesel control system. So the removal of the subsidies has reported leads to a 30% reduction in retail diesel sales, which uh, involve the subsidies. Okay, while as a result, the commercial diesel sales has increased by 4 million liter per day okay, after the announcement of the subsidy reductions. Okay, so uh, it's indicated that uh, it's a shift in the consumption patterns okay, after the announcement. Okay, so the government plans to use the fleet cut and the cash transfers to protect certain groups from the price increase. Those groups, including like operators okay, of the public transport vehicles and commercial diesel vehicles. So this approach will ensure that those essential services do not experience a cost increase okay, while could lead to the wider inflationary pressures on the goods and the service. As a result for the short term, the government will end to reduce the advance, uh, the adverse impact on the inflation. So this is crucial because the board base uh, subsidies can lead to general price increase across the economies. Okay, targeting specific groups, okay, it helps to contain those inflationary pressures within the manageable level. The government offers subsidies specifically for traders using commercial uh, diesel vehicles. This include like public transport vehicles, goods, transportation vehicles, and so on. So by doing so, that ends to help the operational cost of essential transport service stable, preventing the cost increase from being passed to passed on to the consumer. So the government has emphasized the importance of monitoring and enforcement to prevent the business from raising price without any solid justifications. So for short terms. Okay, of course, we might suffer uh, from the adjustment and new uh, policies uh, implementations, but of course, we are well, we are we are actually looking forward okay, for a better result for a long term. Okay, so it, as a long term result, the 
um, governments will save around four billions annually for those subsidies cuts and the service, uh, the savings. Okay, and we can redirect those savings and the service uh, subsidies cuts towards and enhancing the competitiveness of key sectors. Okay, other key sectors such as uh, education, okay, healthcare, infrastructures, and so on. So this approach can anticipate to mitigate the inflationary pressures and prevent unjustified price hikes in the transport sectors. Okay, for longer term, okay, we might have better relocations of funds okay, from the diesel subsidies to expected to improve the Malaysia's coming fiscal sustainable sustainability, potentially leading to a positive reverberations of the country credit rating by international agency. So it can attract more foreign investments and the books, the value of the Malaysia's ringgit, which will enhance the exchange rate of the Malaysia's. And that is also short term, long term. And you mentioned also that uh, this uh, uh, execution action will also bring a pressure to the inflation. Uh, so how, what measure has the government taken to mitigate uh, the potential increases in inflation in the future? Okay, so uh, when when government newly an, uh, announced the subsidy cuts on the diesel, okay, okay, most of the businessmen and traders they will think of inflation, okay, because it will like uh, they were afraid afraid that the burdens of the subsidies cuts it will pass on to the consumer, so it will lead to inflations in the coming time, okay. But actually, uh, this is something that I note yet. Okay, because uh, government have takes uh, a lot of uh, actions to mitigate the potential increase in the inflation. Okay, so examples, okay, government have adopted a comprehensive approach, okay, focusing on the targeted subsidies, cash assistance, monitoring, enforcement, and reinvestment of savings, okay, uh, to improve the economy stability measures. Okay, so the first thing is the flipped cuts and the cash uh, transfers. Okay, uh, the government provides to the public transport operators and the commercial diesel vehicle users the fleet cut to ensure that those groups that entitled to the subsidies continue to receive the fleet at subsidized rate, okay, protecting them from the price hike. So this method it helps to maintaining the stable transportation costs and prevent the pass-through of increased costs to the consumer. Okay, other than that, we also have cash transfers, which is a direct financial assistance is given to a specific group, such as uh, smallholders, farmers, and traders. Okay, it will help them to mitigate the immediate financial burden caused by the increased diesel price. So for the traders, for the trans uh, public transportation uh, users, actually they don't have a solid reasons to increase the price just because of the subsidy cuts. Uh, on the diesels. Okay. Other than that, okay, uh, the government also uh, preventing the unjustified price uh, hit, height, okay, due to uh, by using regulatory oversight, okay, and uh, have implemented some consumer protection. Okay, examples: the government will ask some uh, the authority parties to monitoring the, uh, the transport sectors to ensure that any increase in the cost must be justified. If they're unable to justify, then penalties will be given. Okay, so this includes preventing the business from exploding the situations by raising the price unnecessarily. And on the other hand, the government also proactive stands on monitoring helps to protect the consumers from inflationary pressures that could arise from unjustified price hurt, uh, such as uh, in, in essential service and the good. Okay, so that's why uh, the subsidies are given to the eligible parties, so they don't have any excuse to increase the price. Okay, so once the price on the essential service and the goods increase, then governments will take actions for the uh, any further investigations and monitoring. And one more, one of the focus for this uh, subsidy rational, uh, rationalization is to stop illegal uh, DC smuggling activities at the border. Do you think that this measure will stop illicit activities given that those who have tendencies to do that might still enjoy the subsidy and the fleet cut or even we call Budi Madani? Okay, 
Yeah, this is a good question. Okay. Um, the main purpose of implementing the subsidy card uh, uh, will be reducing the uh, burden, the subsidy burdens. At the same time, okay, they want to reduce the smuggling activities at the border. Okay, so if this uh, as the result of implementing this subsidy card, okay, uh, we can see a shift in the consumption pattern from the retail sales to commercial sales. So, which means, okay, uh, previously, the smuggling, usually they will uh, enjoy, enjoy the subsidies go by through the retail sales. Okay, since the subsidy has been cut and only passed through, given to those that Ill eligible to, then those parties that uh, conduct smuggling activities, okay, it will be very difficult to access to the subsidy anymore. Okay, we can actually apply uh, the fraud triangles theories, okay, in explaining these situations. Okay, in the fraud triangles theory, okay, we have three factors that explain why uh, the fraud or smuggling activities, okay, uh, is continuing happens uh, in the recent year. It's because of the uh, essentials, okay, or um, motivations of doing these activities, opportunities of doing these activities, and the rationalizations for those that were conducting the uh, smuggling activities. So, uh, when the government try to reduce, cut the subsidies and only uh, distribute the subsidies to the particular uh, parties that who are eligible to, then it will actually cut down the opportunity that given to the smuggling activities to uh, happen more fre uh, frequently, like the past, like in the past. Okay, so the opportunity, the available, the availability of the subsidized diesel creates an opportunity for smuggling. As long as the price difference between the subsidies and the market price diesels remains significant, okay, this kind of activity will still uh, going on since the profit for them is still uh, outweigh the risk that they take to conduct these activities. So, other than cut down the opportunity... Right. Okay, thank you very and, much. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Sawi.